Um, I would like to present you the software, which is based, of course, on QGIS. It's a plugin for QGIS, but there are also some parts that are not part of the QGIS, uh, but I will probably not present them today. Uh, that software is uh, used for uh, support for search and rescue mission, uh, basically for police of the Czech Republic, but also for rescue mountain service. Uh, the project was uh, uh, led by uh, people from uh, Czech University of Life, Life Sciences, namely uh, Iva Svobodová and Helena Chloubková. And in the names, you can see also the uh, policeman Vladimir Makesh, which is now some kind of colonel or something like this. When we started, he was a captain. So he, according to this project, he, uh, uh, he was promoted to, uh, to colonel. Um, okay, how to next something like this, this? No, page down probably. No, okay. Uh, the purpose of this uh, tool is uh, basically help uh, with uh, planning of the search and rescue mission. We are focused on the people that are lost in the terrain, usually in a forest or in some fields. The software was never focused to search in, for people inside uh, villages or municipalities uh, because it's a completely different task. And for the uh, leader, or manager of this uh, search and rescue mission. Uh, he has some tools like um, monitoring the stuff, the things, how the process of uh, search is, is uh, going. Uh, at the end, the, the process uh, is somehow archived to be able for uh, teaching um, other police officers, officers or teaching the software to use um, better statistics. Uh, for some uh, computing. Uh, the main goal was to speed up the processes uh, because at the beginning, before we created this software, uh, it took, for example, two hours uh, before the search and rescue mission started because the, the, the police officer has to draw on all these search sectors in a map. In some software, they use probably uh, the OZ Explorer, you maybe know. Um, and there were no other tools how to monitor uh, the status and so on, so speed up the process, basically. Okay. Uh, there were some conditions in the beginning. The first one was that everything must run offline, so no internet connection. Um, that was the, basically the reason why we selected the QGIS, because there was some decision at the beginning, and the QGIS uh, uh, suits quite well for this purpose. Then another condition was Windows 10, which was sometimes really crazy for me, uh, and also integrate some police data uh, into, uh, into uh, the software. Uh, what was probably very interesting on this project is that during the development, I spent days with the police officers in a field, in exercises. I also led some exercises. For example, the biggest exercise that I led with another uh, guy from police, you can see the numbers. It was like 20 people with dogs, handlers, uh, 100 uh, police uh, in a field searching, 100 firemen, guys that were also searching, and also there were some guys from uh, ambulance and so on. It's a really big, uh, big exercise. And I was the one that was leading this exercise with another guy from police. And it was the, uh, another really good step because I found really a lot of things that were not correct in the software. And I had to change them because if you lead them, if you, if you lead this exercise, you now see, okay, I need this one faster. I need this one in a different way. I don't want to spend some time really opening some table Okay, I can open it, but it's faster to have it on, for example, on right click or something like this. So it was really uh, building the software with uh, cooperation, tight cooperation with uh, police. Uh, at the end, uh, for the starting the software, this, the police officer has six steps for starting the plan of the search. Um, at the end, uh, he has the 
search plan. He has also some estimation how long it will take in a case that he has some units for search. Uh, there is also some recommendation if he should use uh, dogs, if he should use, for example, helicopter or drone, or he should use, for example, divers, because there are some uh, water bodies uh, for, for search inside the water. Uh, there are also the data for GPS uh, in GPX uh, format, of course, and there is also always PDF map for print, because it is still uh, the fun thing is we should work offline, and another thing is all officers must be able to work without any equipment except map. So they must be able to work without any electricity, just with the printed map. So it's another thing that uh, they must be able to do, the search without GPS, without anything. So this is the first step, he selects some area, okay, we are searching for some person close to this municipality, he lost in the forest uh, next to some, some village. Uh, the second step is the selecting type of the person. Uh, maybe in discussion I can explain why this list, but we have just this, I don't know, eight uh, groups or eight types of, uh, of uh, people. Uh, so children, some kind of despondence or some Alzheimer and other other type of uh, people. Then you, as an officer, place the last seen information. For example, say, okay, I, somebody seen him here. You can place not only one, of course, you can place more points. There is also some kind of weight, but I think the police never use this, the weight uh, for some um, optimization, but you can say this. And this is the third step. The first fourth step is uh, some kind of the probability map where you can see uh, that, uh, if you can understand this one, means that here were found, or if you, if you search this small circle or some kind of polygon inside, you have the probability 10% that you will find the person if you search bigger area, you have 20, 30, 50. This one is probably 70%. So if you search this area, you have some kind of probability of 70% that you will find the person. Of course, it can happen. You will not find it for, for sure. But, but this, all the model is based on some kind of statistics and somehow deformed by digital elevation model. We use GrassGIS as a background computing. We use the RVOLC algorithm for uh, this uh, statistics uh, deformation. Uh, I can explain later if you will be interested. The five step is about saying, okay, I'm expecting in this area five handlers. I'm sure that there will be two firemen brigades. So I will have 60 people for some search. And I know that there will be one or two drones uh, for search. And according to this one, uh, there is some computing, some estimation of time uh, for search. The six steps is just the creating the report for the user. You can see the sectors. These sectors are important because uh, they are, they should be always visible in a field. So the user or the handler or the people that are searching should be able to navigate even without the GPS. So there, there are like some uh, rivers or some streets or some, some um, tracks and other, other uh, visible things uh, uh, in a field uh, that create these uh, search sectors. Uh, this is the report where he starts, there are the, the maps for, for, for print in uh, several scales. And uh, there are also uh, some kind of information about which, which type of uh, fields or landscape is here. Also some estimation how long it will take and also some estimation if you want search uh, in, a, uh, it's somewhere here, different place, but there is also estimation if you want to search in some time, for example, if this is a small child and there is a freezing, uh, then uh, you need, for example, more, you have to ask for more uh, handlers or for more people for search. There are also some options that the, after the, cha the situation can change. For example, you have new information, he has been seen somewhere or she has been seen somewhere, then you can recalculate everything, you can change the 
uh, search units and so on. We have also one feature here, but I think nobody is using it except uh, probably Ukraine because it's searching for mines. Yeah, so you can, you can switch to some uh, mine uh, detection. Uh, the monitoring, this is the plan. So he starts search. Uh, he has a plan, he has everything for searchers. He can give them either the GPS uh, information or the printed map. And then he can uh, somehow monitor how the search is going on. So this is the simple situation. The green one sector has been already searched. The yellow one, the search is ongoing. And there are other some, uh, I think there is only one. It's a red one, which means this sector has some problem. You have to search it again, or you need some other equipment. Like, for example, in mountain, you need some guys that are able to to uh, to, to to climb on on, on mountains on, on rocks. Uh, that's basically the way how he is within. And if uh, we are only offline, which is quite common. Then it works in a way that if uh, somebody is searching, he return back to um, the um, to the car where where this uh, software is running, and he connects the GPS uh, into the computer. We download the track, and we can show the track on a map. If we are lucky, which is not quite common, then there is also online tracking uh, possible. We are able to connect to some online tracking. We test it with uh, this one software, which is the Rescue Mountain Service. This is our preferred software. Uh, we also tested with this software, which are used by firemen, basically, Gina. And we are able to connect this software into uh, this uh, QGIS plugin. Uh, there is also some kind of analysis after the track is downloaded or online viewed. The officer can say, okay, analyze me this sector, and he can see, okay, there is a problem. Uh, the dog goes this way. Okay, this part may be not correctly search. Go there again and search it again. Uh, of course, this is a problem of wind direction. For now, we don't care much about the wind direction, but for the dogs, it's really important to also somehow include the wind direction. The problem in this sector is usually that the wind direction is going from different sides, so it could be quite complicated. So for now, it's just the buffer, nothing more. Uh, of course, the police officer can change the buffer for, for this analyze. That's possible. Usually we set like 50 meters because the dog is able to, uh, to sniff for uh, 50 meters, but in some situations, even 200 meters is possible to, to get the information from searching person that it's here. Uh, at the end, we also decided to archive all the searches. So we archive uh, all tracks, all states uh, during the search. And uh, we also archive some status of the search person. So if it has been found in some situation, conditions, if it is for injured or of course dead or other possible things. Um, you can see there is the output, basically, where it was found, uh, house from report, on which place, some other information, and, and so on. So this is the also some part of uh, the result. And we hope in the future, but now I don't believe <laughs> that in the future also there will be some machine learning model that can help us also to somehow predict where the search person uh, could be found or lost persons could be found. Uh, but for now, we don't have enough cases to even start some machine learning. We even can start some statistics because we have like, I don't know, maybe 100 cases for now. It's really not too much to even compute some good statistics. So for now, we are still using uh, Australian statistics for Czech Republic. This is the Australian statistics that we use. Uh, it, for, it's from, I don't know, 10,000 cases or something like this. I don't remember, remember the exact uh, number. And you can see how it works. This is the basically child in this age, 10% were found really close to the place, 110 meters. And 
80% in two kilometers found. So you can really search really small area for the small child. It's not necessary to go anywhere else. But if you look, for example, on Alzheimer, you can see that there is a bigger number even in this 10 kilometers and so on. So it depends on a person. And this is the statistic that we use. Uh, you can switch to uh, American statistics or uh, United Kingdom statistics, or you can you define your statistics if you want. Uh, but police still using this uh, Australian statistics. So probably Czech people are moving simple, similar like uh, Australian guys. Uh, this is one example of speed up that we also bring to the software. This is the calling of handlers. Uh, if you start a search, you have in a real time information how far some dog handlers are available. You can see the status. This one is available. This one is not. You can see the distance from your place how far this guy is. You can select these guys. You can click and say, OK, I want you. And or on their mobile phone, it rings and say, OK, I want you for action. He say, OK, I'm ready. No problem. I will come in one hour. You can uh, count on me. No problem. That's something that we speed up the process from, let's say, two hours to 30 minutes. Because before this one, it took two hours when the uh, handler has been informed that he should come because it was go from some centers like it, it's I think it's fire brigade is responsible for this and so there's some guy and saying oh okay I will try to find some handlers then he calls no answer he say okay there is no handler there is no handler so it took really two hours even sometimes more uh, of course, this is what you know. Uh, we use the normal QGIS things like uh, possibility to split uh, and draw even all your own, own sectors. Uh, and what is probably uh, the most important thing, we're just trying to make it as much as possible simple for the police officer to use the software. For now, we have 20 buttons. It's really too much. <laughs> Uh, and we are still trying to reduce, reduce, reduce the number of, of buttons for the user, uh, moving the functionality to some advanced user things, because we, after, I don't know, uh, it's now two years in some production or testing still, it's still officially testing, but it's still, it's using. And we know that a lot of functionality is not used. Uh, so we are moving in some advanced things like uh, that the officer doesn't need it uh, very much. So that's probably all from my side. I just would like to say that I'm also here as a uh, member of GIS Mentors, which is the Czech group, which is also um, teaching or lecturing uh, QGIS software for, for public. So uh, in Czech Republic, sorry, we don't have the group. We are connected to Slovak. <laughs> uh, but maybe in the future, we can also, as a GIS mentors, create some kind of Czech uh, QGIS uh, local group. But I think we tried once and we decided it's too much work. OK, so that's why we connected to Slovak, because they are really hardworking people. So that's good. OK, so thank you. And you have questions. I'm really help to, uh, I'm happy to answer you. We got a good time for some questions. And yes, so far there. Um, one, hello, one hundred times two, the handlers today all get the same name, or is it only the same handlers? Like, well, what is it, the beginning, we want to get them already part of the whole. It depends on the handler, basically. Uh, usually they they want the bigger area to, to see. Uh, but some of them say, OK, I don't care. I just need my sector and I don't care about anything uh, around. They also have uh, in, in mobile phone online map, uh, which is uh, the police map. And they can they can uh, draw uh, the sector uh, on the um, police map. And the rescue mountain service has also uh, this one. They don't have the policeman. They have their own map, and they have already integrated all these sectors into their map. So they are without any downloading, without anything, just it means they don't even need to go 
to the how I'm not sure how it's called in English, but it's the place where the police officer which is leading this operation it's it is uh, uh, situated. And it's just according to call or WhatsApp, he can say, oh, go to this sector because we have unified the naming of the sectors for whole, whole Czech Republic. So there are unique names. So you can just name the sector and he can go directly without any, uh, any connecting, going directly to, to the, the place where the police officer is, is, is situated. So he can go from another, another part of, of the forest, start searching. That's something. So it depends really on, 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 on the person. There was another question. Um, this is horrible. So, um, can you touch the current if there's a river nearby or is that too complex? Sorry, I didn't catch this one. Uh, the, the, which river? If there's a um, bigger river, like a Danube river. Big, bigger river, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it possible to integrate the current or is it too complex? Uh, for us, the bigger rivers are like not uh, passable if there is no bridge. So we say there is no possibility to go through the river. We expect that the lost person usually don't don't swim through the river. So if it is a bigger river, uh, it's like not passable for us. So if there is a bridge, of course you can go, but if there is no bridge, there, there is not, not, not passable, this part. Yes, uh, it's possible to use this uh, solution for yeah, uh, it's possible. Uh, you need to prepare the data. That's probably all. Yeah. Um, one problem that could be we are really strictly connected to our coordinate system or our projection. It can bring some problems. I didn't test it yet on different projection. Uh, maybe if you use uh, Google Mercator, it probably will work in some situations quite okay. Uh, for now, we will be testing in Lithuania and Ukraine, uh, and I will use probably Mercator for this, but I'm not sure, maybe UTM, but I'm really not sure yet. Uh, but it's it's possible, and this, you just need to prepare the data in some structure. That's, that's, that's all that you need to do, yeah. And also there is some version which doesn't use the GRASS-GIS at the, at, at the beginning, so you don't need to even the digital elevation model. Uh, for, for computing. We use just, there is some simplified version, which uses just the statistics. And it works quite okay as well. Uh, so it's easier to prepare the data for this. By the way, yes, it's a complicated local projection here on this t-shirt. Huh? <laughs> yeah, this is one. <laughs> time for one more question. Uh, I want to ask what's your ultimate goal? Because right now you said it was pretty much in testing stage. And I was wondering if you are aiming to, you know, mass deploy it in the future, or if, if you know that there will be any interest in the public for this at all. Yeah, I hope that uh, I will be able to create it like for whole world, the software, even with the some automatic uh, creating of the data, probably based on OpenStreetMap. Okay, there are we already have some some pipelines that are able to create them, but there are still some problems. It's not so simple and straightforward uh, because everything was based on the check data and transforming the open statement needs some, some uh, adjustment. But uh, yeah, this is probably the goal. And for Czech Republic, I hope that they will use it for the, in the future. And uh, for now, uh, we are just really simplifying the interface and we are now connecting to others systems, police, uh, for example, P-Track, which is the software for, for, for tracking, basically, and we would like to some integrate these things. So it's this is ongoing. It's not so easy, but hopefully in the future it will work. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Jan. We have a little present for you from the Okay, thank you. Uh,